Okay, that good, it works. Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. I know it is very, very cold. And good morning for you at home. Probably your coffee and your hot chocolate and your tea. <laughs> so I hope you're nice and comfortable. Okay, let us start today with some scripture. Oh, actually, I want to start with announcements today. I just want to do some announcements before we begin our, our worship. So let's just do our announcements. Our announcements today is we just got our, we'll do our birthdays first. We've got someone's birthday on Friday. I don't know whose it is. Is it mine? Oh, golly, it's mine. Yes, it's my birthday on Friday, and I'm going to be 21 again with a couple more numbers on. No, you don't know how old I am. 21, Bethany. Yes. 49. Uh, Then we've also got Hudson on Sunday, and we've also got Liz on Monday. So many happy returns to you. We've actually got no wedding anniversaries as we know it. Any of the wedding anniversaries here? No, nothing as we know it. And we've also got some notices for tonight. Tonight on Sunday, we've got our Zoom. We always have our Zoom night. So if you need to, the codes, please come and talk to me. Uh, Also, this Wednesday, we've changed it now. Every Wednesday, until the government obviously uh, sort of still permit us, which they do to meet. We have a prayer meeting here at 6.30 every meeting, to every Wednesday, every meeting, every Wednesday, 6.30. Please come here. We've also got a Bible study on Zoom this week, and please contact Phil. That's Phil's doing his uh, Zoom Bible study online. And probably in the future, once we've got all the technology up and running, it's almost there, almost there, then we'll probably be doing another Zoom. I'll probably be doing another Bible study online. So if you want to join up or you're interested, let me know. Okay, let's start now with some scripture. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, We thank you that you love us. We thank you that such an awesome God, as we will sing soon, the invisible God became visible. The invisible God came visible in Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, thank you then that the word then became flesh, that you are active, you are living today. Heavenly Father, as you said that you are active and living, that what comes from your word, Lord, will produce its fruit. Heavenly Father, we pray that every word that is spoken today from you, that we will listen and bear much fruit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now stand up and now worship the Lord. Thank you. 
We've been on a journey. We have been on a journey, and I think Christianity. And we've been talking about remembrance. We've been talking about, obviously, nativity. We talked about remembering God, remembering how God fulfilled his promises, remembering also the gifts that were given and the gifts that were used. But then sometimes, and what's been going, what's been feeling, and I want to share to the church, sometimes for us, we can freely give. Sometimes it's very easy for us to give to people. But let's be honest, it's very hard to freely receive. It's very hard, and even it's simple. If I say to most people today, how are you? The first thing we're probably going to say is, I'm all right, how are you? And yet, when you're at home, you're praying something different. Dear Lord, I'm tired. Dear Lord, I'm broke. Dear Lord, I don't have a job. Let someone hear me. Maybe next day you go out again. Someone says, how are you? I'm okay. And you? Then you may go into your bedroom. Dear Lord, no one listens to me. Where are you, Lord? I'm waiting. We are the church. We are his people who have God's glory within us. We are the receivers and the givers. And people say, where's God? It's very easy. Where are us in our honesty? And that's one thing today. I want us to listen to God's promises. Today, we're learning a new series about God's image. We're made in his image. And sometimes what stops us, obviously, is pride. But that pride comes down to unworthiness. It comes from our guilt it becomes from comparing, but today I hope you start comparing and you start knowing your true image is in God. And when you hear these words, these are the true words. This is why we're sitting here. You've gone through the Christmas, you believed in that. God has called you today. He wants to speak to you. But you know what's going to happen? We have to be responsive. We have to. How many times God has spoken and spoken and spoken and we'll say, I'm all right. I'm okay. Also, as I told another member of our church, we're also robbing other people to bless them. I may have had some money in my pocket and I just want to bless somebody. I'm like, Lord, can you show me who? And then it could be you. But you say, I'm okay. And you? As I say to a church man, I want to leave this with you today. If we can't help ourselves in the church community, how can we help out there? If we can't be humble to the people we say who love us, how can we help people out there? But it all comes back down to one thing. That filter called us. I'm not worthy. Other people don't know my situation. I'm the only one struggling. I'm a weirdo. No one's going to listen to me. I haven't paid my dues yet. These are all rubbish. God has given you a free gift. And he keeps on going. And now we're going to be listening to a video, and you're also out there. And listen, these are words, scriptures, and I love how they've done it. They called it a love letter from God. And they put scriptures together. And have a look at these scriptures. These are for you. And be, be careful. Some of you may cry. I'm saying that because when I heard that, I was like, wow. They're piercing. Listen to them. Because we listen to the rubbish out there already. We listen to the rubbish that shapes us, but doesn't make us. Remember that. That's the, the things that we listen to has not made us, but it seems to shape us. But what's made us seems not to shape us. 
So I hope today when you hear these words, they start shaping you. And remember, it's God speaking to you. And take off your filter because you are worthy. Christ has died for you. Think of that. Remember, Christ has died for you, but he's got much, much more. Because we read on there, we sung today, we blossom. Do you feel like you're blossoming right now? <laughs> we meant to be blossoming the fruit. So I want you to listen today to this video, and this is for you. And I want you to try to start being honest with each other. When someone simply comes up to you and says, how are you? Be honest to the people you know, you love and trust. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck on your own. Let's listen to this. I'm just going to pray before we have this on. Dear Heavenly Father, when we hear your word, sometimes we do not listen to the maker. When you want to shape us, we don't listen but yet we're quick to listen to the negativity around us. Lord, I just pray now for these truths that we hear, that we can hear them in our heart, because you are the maker. The words you are about to experience are true. They will change your life if you let them. For they come from the very heart of God. He loves you. And He is the Father you have been looking for all your life. This is His love letter to you. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake. For all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you those desires. 
I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my Son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I love that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. And nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love, your dad, Almighty God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, the words that we have heard from you today, I know, Lord, have touched hearts. Heavenly Father, if there is confusion or struggles, I pray for that wonderful word that you've given when people are in stress. Do not be afraid. Peace be with you. So Heavenly Father, just pray for these words that are strong. I just pray there'll be peace that passes all understanding. And I pray that we can openly receive as we now start to worship you. I just pray that we can offer our lives to you. That's all you want us to do is to come home if there are people watching who haven't received Christ in their hearts, take this opportunity with this song. Give your heart to him. That's all he wants, nothing else. And he will do the rest. It says there it's that simple, but I know pride can always get in the way. But let me ask you one question. People are sitting here and the people who are watching. What profit have you ever got from pride? What profit have you ever got from pride? Let us worship the Lord. Stories of what they 
you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. 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 I've seen many searching for. Tonight. 
blessing, praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you.
hearing our prayers. And may Heavenly Father, you hear our prayers today and meet us where we are today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to take a seat, if you want to take a seat, and now we've got matters for prayer. I've got here matters for prayers, but before I read out these ones that I have on the list, if you have something that you would like uh, us to pray for, you may raise your hand and then I'll be able to recognize you and give you the opportunity to share with us what you want us to stand with you in prayer. Remember, we come to the Father. We come to the throne of grace where we receive mercy, we receive answers, and the Lord wants us to pray, to ask him. Um, this is from Polly. She's praising the Lord for the peace and providing for everything that they have needed. And she says that we praise uh, the Lord for his work. He has enabled them to, uh, they're doing a volunteer work. And by God's grace, they have been able to continue doing it via Zoom, helping people who are separated, separated parents to see their kids online. So they are praising the Lord for giving them that opportunity that they are able to do it. And then uh, Gerard praises the Lord that Durant, Joy Durant came home last Sunday. He says that we spoke to her yesterday. And although she feels very tired and lacking the energy, but she feels progress is being made. And then this one comes from Jean. She says, thanks for your prayers. My cousin Martin with COVID is now out of the hospital and is at home, although continues on oxygen. However, a client of mine, <laughs> Mary, uh, Mary is suffering from COVID. Sorry. Mary is suffering from COVID. A long time COVID is still several months. And also, my niece Hannah has recovered from COVID in South Africa. But our fiancé called Justin is now also sick of COVID. And then uh, this one comes from Stan. He needs our prayers. There is an emergency alert about Stan on Wednesday as he was taken to Northwick Park Hospital uh, for a test. He was later sent home with uh, his medication changed. However, yesterday night, Stan was... Uh, was back at Northwick Hospital being assessed in the stroke unit. Please remember to pray for him, Margaret, and the rest of the family. Another prayer that we have here is Mary Dalton's family needs our prayers. For Mary Dalton's family as they attended her funeral service at Pina Cemetery on Monday morning, that's tomorrow. Please pray for Paul Curry, that is uh, Stan and Margaret's sons who are taking care of the service. Um, another one is Derek, needs our prayers. Is having an appointment uh, tomorrow, Monday, 
with a top nerve specialist. It's not Monday, it's a Thursday. And that is going to be face to face. Um, so we pray that nothing will come in between and uh, this appointment will not be canceled so the Lord makes everything come, become possible. And lastly that I have on my list is uh, we continue to pray for the key, uh, key workers in our midst. That is including Sam, Gabriela, Winnie, Texture, and Mary. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is the surest that we have, that when we come to the Father, he's able to hear us as we pray. And you called us to do not cease praying, that we should continue to ask of anything that we desire and need. First of all, Father, we are grateful for the miracles that you are performing amidst of us. We thank you for the praises that every day you bring to our hearts, Lord King of Glory, providing for us, meeting our needs, supplying everything that we want. We thank you for the technology that is enabling us to reach out to the community, to the people who are in need, Lord. We thank you, King of Glory, for our journey masses are always, Lord, committed unto you. You're able to make us, to unite us together with our families, with people that are longer, di- uh, that are, are being at long distance, Lord. And we thank you, King of Glory. We thank you for the amazing things, the amazing wonders that you perform amidst of us, Lord, day to day, O oh God. And Jesus, we come before you knowing that you are the Lord who heals all our diseases. Knowing that we have the name of Jesus that is powerful. The name of Jesus that is above COVID, Lord. Jesus Christ, we we thank you for Martin, O God. We thank you for the work that you're doing, Lord. And we continue to pray for total recovery, for healing, Lord, King of glory. We pray, King of glory, for uh, Jean Brooks' cousin, King of glory, that is suffering right now with the COVID in South Africa. Lord, we pray that your hand of mercy will reach out to where he is right now and cause him to have that healing, Lord, that you will minister to him in an amazing way. We pray, King of glory, that let there be a way out at every situation that has covered them, Lord. May your voice speak louder in the situation that they are going through. Father, we pray for Stan, O God, that is, is, uh, is King of Glory, is back in, at uh, Northwick Hospital. Lord, we pray, King of Glory, we commit his life in your hands. We pray for wisdom with the doctors that are working, that are meeting him, Lord. We pray because you are the doctor of doctors, Lord. Wisdom, knowledge, is all comes from you. We pray, King of glory, that your hand of healing, that your hand of grace, Lord, will be able to streamline everything for your glory, O God. For this is the promise that we have. That Jesus, through you, by your stripes, we were healed. We were made complete. We are complete in you, O God. Lord, we are praying, King of glory, for uh, Mary Dalton's family. That right now, as they grieve, they go through the process of uh, organizing the burial ceremony, O God. We're praying for the family. We're praying for the friends. We're praying for this, the people that are grieving, Lord, that are connected to this family, that, Lord Jesus, you be their comfort, that you be the one that they lean to amidst of the several questions that are overwhelming them, asking why, grieving, Lord, 
You are the comforter. So we pray that their hearts, their souls will be comforted. That you will strengthen their trembling knees, O oh God. Lord, we pray for Derek as he's going to have the appointment to meet the doctor, Lord. Especially within this period, this season of COVID, Lord. Where appointments change each and every day. Lord, we pray, King of glory, may this appointment be successful. We pray, King of glory, that this meeting be, Lord, that you will take charge, that you will protect them, Lord, as they go, uh, Derek and his wife, Lord, as they go to the hospital, we pray that, my God, you will take control, that you will lead them, that you'll be in charge, and Jesus, that they will be able to get to the root of the problem, and there will be solution, oh God. Lord, we remember Sam, Winnie, Mary, oh God, Gabriela, take sure that as they continue, and many others that are working, that are key workers, Lord, we pray for protection. We thank you for your continued protection over them. And we also continue to pray that you will protect them. That as they serve, as they give their bodies, as they give whatever that they have for you, Lord, they will be covered. And many, and we remember the NHS, oh God, the people that are working so hard day and night to see that lives are saved, Lord. We pray for the government. We pray that, Lord Jesus, your great hand be raised above the situation of COVID, Lord. And we will come to a time when we'll look back and say, by God's grace, we overcame COVID. And COVID is history to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thank you for that. We're now going to be preparing ourselves for the word. I just want to quickly pray for Samuel as he comes up to give us the word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are among us. And Lord, I do believe already you are speaking to our hearts. Heavenly Father, as we now go more into your word, looking at the image, your image, Lord, may we understand where these wonderful words are coming from, who you are, the character of God that you have made us to be like. So, Heavenly Father, may your Holy Spirit just come and give the words to Samuel, and may we have hearts to receive them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. morning. Let's just commit this moment to the Lord. Father, we thank you for who you are. We just want to welcome your presence in this place. You are God Almighty. There is none like you. Father, we're here because of you. And we ask that, Lord, whatever we do in this place, that your name shall be glorified. Father, I pray for those who are hearing us by way of the internet and watching us at home. Father, I pray that your very presence that is here will join them wherever they are. You are spirit, O oh God. And Father, Lord, O oh God, we know that you're omnipresent. You're everywhere. 
And Father, I pray for the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be upon me today. And I pray that, Lord, as this word comes forth, you'll come forth with life, with power to bring healing and restoration in our lives. Father, may you bring life to those who are hearing me today. I ask all these in your name. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. We'll be looking at a message uh, titled, Our Image, God Creates Us in His Image. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says that God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. There was a decision made by the Trinity in heaven to create this being that reflects their image of God and the likeness of God. In verse 27 says, And so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. Now, this is where I always got confused. God decides to create mankind in his own image and likeness. And he talks about male and female. Now, the first thing that I think about when I think of image, when we look ourselves in the mirror, is we see a reflection of who we are. When a child looks at themselves in the mirror, they see a child. When you look at yourself, you see a man, maybe you see a woman. Maybe you see yourself as Chinese. You may see yourself as African. There's something you see in the mirror that reflects you. But God is saying we want to create them male and female, which confuses us because is God Chinese or is he all of us in one? Let us create them in our image and likeness, male and female. It's really confusing. And so, next verse. We know, according to John 4, 26, 24, that God is spirit, which adds on to more confusion. God is spirit. We have flesh. And he's saying he wants to create us in his own image. How can we look like God? You can see me. God is spirit, but we are flesh. What does that really mean? For the Bible reader who is seeking to know God, there are three things that have confused us. Our nature, our gender, our color, and God is spirit. And in spirit, you cannot see nothing. So let's take a journey in this. Genesis 2 says this. And God, the Lord God, formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What does that mean? What is a soul? Next verse. Your soul is the essence that is eternal. Remember, God is eternal. The soul is that unchanging nature in you, which it resembles God. God is unchanging. You cannot tell the difference from the essence of God. It is the driver in your body. It's the spirit. It's the essence of God, which gives life to that body that God created from the ground to begin to do things. In Job 27, verse 3 to 4, Job says, as long as my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips will not speak falsehood and my tongue will not utter deceit. Now, Job understood that there is the presence of God, there is the power of God in him that causes him to do either right or wrong. But he knew as long as it is the spirit of God in him, he'd had the ability not to speak falsehood or utter deceit. 
There's a quote a man once said, in the mirror, when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we see a reflection of our appearance, whether we are Chinese or English or African, but in our heart, we will find a reflection of our soul. In your heart, you find a reflection of who God is like. And so, when God is talking about his image, he's talking about a reflection of his personality. So, you can be Chinese, you can be Indian, you can be Mexican, but when God comes in you by his spirit, he is talking about creating in this human being of the ground his personality. Let us create this people in our personality, in our character, demonstrating our power and wisdom and the way we think. So it has nothing to do with your physical nature. Otherwise, we all become confused of who God looks like. Let us create them in the way we think. Let us create them in the way we do things. Let us create them in the way we operate. So when God told Adam, Adam, where are you? It's not because God could not see Adam. God is omnipresent. God can see everything. He's everywhere. What was he talking about? Adam, where are you? He was looking for Adam in the garden. He was saying to him, I cannot see my personality in you. I cannot see my character in you. I don't see myself in you anymore. I cannot see a reflection in you. Adam had sinned and fallen and become short of the glory of God. So what God could see in Adam was flesh and blood. He couldn't see him anymore. All he could see is sin in him. All he could see was sickness. He could see immorality in him and death. In fact, from then onwards, we see that the first children of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, there was hatred, there was envy, there was jealousy, and one of them killed the other. The nature and likeness of man had appeared, which cannot be in the presence of God. As far as we know, that man was cast out of the Garden of Eden. He could not be in the presence of God anymore. The image and likeness of man cannot stand in the presence of God. And so, in Exodus 33, 20, when Moses went to the mountain, he said, God, show me your glory. But God said to him, you cannot see my face. Because no man can see me in their natural sense and live. Your sinful nature cannot stand in the presence of God. So although Moses was begging God to show him his glory, God says, no. No man can see me and live. No wonder Paul say this. Walk by the Spirit, or walk in the character of God and the personality of God, and it will be impossible for you to gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desired what is contrary to the Spirit of God, and the Spirit is contrary to the flesh. They are always in conflict with each other. The day Adam sinned, there was a separation of him and God. He was operating in the flesh. God is spirit. That's why John 4.24 says, They that worship him must worship him in the character of the spirit. When we're talking about walking and living by the Spirit, we are talking about reflecting 
or demonstrating God's image through us to the world. We are demonstrating God's character through us. We are demonstrating God's personality through us. That's what Paul was encouraging the Corinthians. Walk in the Spirit. When you do that, you reflect the character of God. Ephesians 3.10, the Bible tells us that we are God's workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. That we should walk in them, not in our nature. That's why Jesus came. When Jesus came, it was for us, for him, to change us back to what God planned in the beginning. In fact, when Jesus was talking to some, belief, some people and preaching to them, some Jewish people, he says in John 10, 31 to 33, he says, again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. In other words, I've demonstrated the character and the personality of God all these times. Of which of these are you going to stone me? He put them on the spot. And they replied, we are not going to stone you for the character and the personality of God you've demonstrated, but for blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. What did he mean? Jesus prayed in John 17, 20. He said this, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so the world may believe that you have sent me. So the world may believe. The world will never believe us until they see that we are working as one with God. Until we all walk in the character and the personality of God, the world will continue to shy away from the church. We can wear all the colors we want, all the big robes, and talk all the scriptures we like, and call ourselves reverend and bishop. It doesn't matter. The world wants to see. Jesus says, may they be in us so that the world will believe. The world will never believe us. In fact, the biggest and the greatest advertisement for the kingdom of God, of the gospel, is the personality and the character or the image of God. Even our families will not believe us. Even our wives will not believe us. They want to see Christ in us. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Don't follow me if you don't see the character of Christ in me. Paul was warning the believers. Don't follow me. As long as you see me following Christ, then you can follow me. Yes. He continues. He says, I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one. The way we think, the way we do things, the way we behave. I in them and you in me, so they may be brought to complete unity. God wants us to be united in the way we think, not looking at each other in the way we look like. When there is unity in the church, in the way we look like, in the way we think and do things, then they'll say, the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So this is the message to the church, a wake-up call. We have all the theology degrees and we, we talk about Greek and, and Hebrew and all that stuff. What the world is looking for is to see God in us. And that will draw them to the church. Next verse. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 17, in fact, Paul advises the unbelievers, says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does the believer have in common with an believer? In other words, there's a chance that you will be stained, the glory of God, the character of God. Remember, God is in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you're coming in contact with something that distests to God, then there will be a problem. He continues, he says, what agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. God lives in us and we carry his essence. We carry his character. We portray how God should speak like or talk like or behave. He says, as God has said, I will be with them and walk with them and I'll be their God and they'll be my people. He says, therefore, Come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. In fact, in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, the Bible says that two cannot walk together unless they agree. Unless you are in agreement on how God wants you to represent him, you cannot walk together with them. You cannot walk together with someone who does not believe what you believe. There has to be an agreement with God. So it's a call from God now. He says, look, I created you from the beginning. My plan was for you to represent me in the way I do things, in the way I look. In that way, you walk in power and authority. Jesus says, greater things will you do than these. If you abide in me and I abide in you, then you will produce much fruit. Fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, kindness, patience, self-control, goodness. You cannot produce those things unless you remain in the image and likeness of God. So it's a time to reflect. It's a time to think. If you've been using your robes and your collar as a priest and walking around showing that you're a bishop or you're a reverend or you're a doctor, God is asking you to reflect something bigger than just your clothes or your attire. Reflect me, God, was, that's what God is saying. Created in the image and likeness of God. I just want us to bow our heads in prayer. As we reflect on this message. First thing we need to do probably is to repent of the way we've represented him. The Bible calls us the kingdom of priests. A priest is a representative of God to the people. We represent God to the world. We are ambassadors of Christ. Of his character and nature. People need to be changed. To think about the times that you've misrepresented Christ in your home, in your work when you've not been faithful, when you've not been kind, when you've not been merciful, when you've not been loving and caring. How have you represented him? Jesus says, go and make disciples, people who will follow me. Yes, we all come to church. It is good. But how are we representing him to the world? Father, we come before you today and we ask you to forgive us, Lord, for the way we have represented you to the world. 
Father, have mercy on us, Lord. Your masses are new every morning, Lord. We pray for the church, Lord. In a way, we've been a hindrance to the world from coming to know who you are, Lord. By presenting something else other than you, Lord. Father, we pray that you open our eyes to see you better than just the external appearance of what it is, Lord. Forgive us for making religious noise, Lord. We continue to give to the world other than presenting the nature of Christ. Lord, I pray for everyone who doesn't know you, O oh God. Lord, you open their eyes to see beyond what they see, Lord. May your spirit, O oh God, open their eyes. We thank you, O oh God, for who you are. And you pray that, Lord, you continue to lead us and guide us in the truth of who you are. For Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that message. Kind of as a twofold message there, I think for people, where are you? Where is our image? And then going back to the beginning, maybe some of you here, maybe you struggle with the image because you don't really know him. Maybe it's people watching there that you don't know the goodness of the Lord. You don't know this great image, the power, the wisdom the good father who wants to lavish his gifts on all of us. So today, that's what I've heard today in the message, I think, for church is, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And we need to go back home to be with our maker. We need to go back and ask our maker and say, here I am. Here I am. Forgive us, Lord. Or maybe for some of you who are watching, or some of you who are in the congregation, it may be, Lord, I don't know you. I want to know you more. I want to know about this image. And we've learned it has nothing to do with us because flesh, we've all fallen short, all of us. Knowing Christ or not knowing Christ, we always fall short because of this thing called flesh. And we need as a church to be living by the Spirit and for people who need to be born again by the Spirit. So if there's people out there who are watching, or even even the congregation, uh, we, we're going to sing two songs today. One of them now is, I give you my heart. We know what Jesus has done from Christmas, from the, when we looked at the nativity. We know that he came as a man to make himself known. God's always saying, here I am, but where are you? And this is a point now where, a simple surrender again and again. And with the song we're going to sing, it's going to go called, I give you my heart. You give God your, your heart, he will cleanse it, purify it, and make it new. Doesn't matter what happened yesterday, today, he can make it new now. So in this song, may this be your worship. I give you my heart, I give you where I am today. Christian, not Christian, I am here and I want to know about you. It's not about, as we've heard from Samuel, it's not about names, it's not about the titles, not even how long you've been a Christian or not. It's about today, living life abundantly, receiving from him so the world can see that Christ is in us and we can start being saving souls and people can start coming to church because God's glory within us. Forgive us if church is empty because of us. Forgive us if we are the stumbling block. Forgive us.
We want to see this, all, all of this seats being, when we come back to COVID and the restrictions, we want to all be filled. But forgive us, it may be us stopping people coming through that door for our lifestyle. So let's, let's now we do worship, let's give our heart and let God change it for the sake of us and for the world. I give you my heart. now we're going to sing is I could sing for his love forever again God loved us first so we can love him if you are struggling with this message about God then I'm asking you if you're online or here it's asking and more of his love it's not about you wrestling and wrestling it's laying it down that's such the hardest thing to do and just say Lord give me your love some of us can sing this song quite easily, and we're going to sing it. I can sing for your love forever. If you're finding this hard, then say, God, can I have more of your love? Open with your own mouth. We cannot help you. That's one thing about faith. This is about your journey. We can encourage you, but your heart is your heart. So I pray now that people who have not received Christ, I pray that you can give your life, and you know his love, that his love endures forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will have eternal life and shall not perish. So let's now uh, finish with our last song, I Can Sing of Your Love Forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with 
And pray that we can sing for his love forever because he is not going anywhere he's never gone anywhere he's always with us so dear heavenly father we thank you for today we thank you lord for your unfailing love lord we cannot understand or comprehend but you made us in your image and heavenly father help us to go out into this place and to keep thinking about that you made us in your image the perfect god the perfect love the creator, the healer. And then, not only did you create us in your image, but you forgave us from our sins and we turned away. And not only did you just forgive our sins and give us life, you gave us a Holy Spirit. So, Heavenly Father, that is something to be joyful about. And, Heavenly Father, if, I, if there is no joy, I just pray for the mourners, Lord, that you will comfort the mourners. You will, be, you will be close to them right now. And they can utter their words of, Lord, here I am. Here I am. We pray all this in Jesus' name. May God bless you for this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to say, everybody, as you know, um, COVID is quite high right now. And a lot of people are not going out. And we're told not to mingle, so I would love if you could just to go home quickly. I do apologize, but I don't want neighborhood to look and think, what are they doing outside? And it'd be quite, yeah, I don't want to be a stumbling block for our neighborhood. So if you could, if I'm going to say my hellos and goodbyes now and do apologize, I'd love to talk to you. But I don't want our neighborhood to think they can meet, we can't. And I want, I want to be a blessing to our neighborhood. So do forgive me and bless you, everyone. <laughs>